You know, frogs are really useful for demonstrating all kinds of things pertaining to the evolution myth. Uh, for example, evolution must violate well-established scientific and natural laws, such as the law of biogenesis. See Crevo rant number 93. And, of course, we've all heard about the famous Miller experiment from the 1950s. You know, the experiment where they attempted to violate the scientific and natural law known as biogenesis? They built this insanely complex scientific apparatus in an attempt to simulate the world as they thought it was so that they might demonstrate how the first building blocks of life came about by random natural processes without intelligence. Wait a minute. Does it not take intelligence to build that scientific equipment? It was a fascinating experiment to be sure, don't take me wrong. And it's pretty amazing that they actually did produce amino acids. But does this mean that life could arise by natural processes? <laughs> In short, no. They only demonstrated how impossible it was for life to do arise by natural processes. The amino acids that were produced by the Miller experiment were split in a 50-50 right-handed, left-handed mix. But left-handed amino acids are the only amino acids used for life. Right-handed amino acids are toxic. It also produced all those amino acids in a toxic brew of, of carboxylic acid and tar. Furthermore, the processes that produce these amino acids tend to inhibit the production of other things necessary for life, such as DNA, for example. Lastly, calling amino acids life is like calling a pile of bricks the Empire State Building. Ah, forget about the Miller experiment. Let's take a quantum leap and give natural processes the best possible fighting chance they could have. We're going to conduct our own experiment. We're going to take Mr. Blender and Mr. Frog. Put Mr. Frog into Mr. Blender. Put Mr. Blender on puree. We now have a nice little frog soup. Oh, this is awesome! Forget about the Miller experiment. We've got proteins, amino acids, enzymes. We've probably even got some intact cells in there. Well, let's take our frog soup and add a little bit of energy. Like evolution would require. Let's maybe add some electricity. Or let's put it out in the sun for a while and let it sit there. Are we going to get any life at all? And I mean anything. Even one of those dead cells coming back to life. You think that's going to happen? No. In fact, what we do have, our cells, enzymes, proteins, etc., will now begin to break down and decay, releasing heat as waste background heat. This is in accord with the second law of thermodynamics. The energy that went into making the frog is now being released back into the environment as waste background heat. The second law of thermodynamics states that everything is running down, decaying, breaking down. We are losing all available energy, and it is being converted into waste background heat, including the energy we use to keep ourselves intact, alive, and healthy. Evolution is an outlaw. Evolution must violate this well-established scientific and natural law in order to produce the first life. Wait a minute. If it violates scientific and natural laws, then that means it's neither scientific nor natural. By definition of the word, it is a supernatural process. It's at this point that the anti-creationists start getting really excited and start jumping up and down and talking about open thermodynamic systems, claiming that Earth is an open thermodynamic system, therefore energy coming in from the sun solves this little problem of thermodynamics. <laughs> Wait a minute, who are you trying to fool here? Closed thermodynamic systems don't exist. We only find them in textbooks and the theoretical realm in order, to, and they are used to instruct people on the laws pertaining to open thermodynamic systems. There is no such thing as a closed thermodynamic system. But nevertheless, let's give evolution a fighting chance, even if we have to rig the fight in order for evolution to win. Let's say the energy is coming in from the sun in an open system. 
which of course it is. There's no such thing as a closed system. Does the energy coming in from the sun accelerate or decelerate thermodynamic decay? If we put our frog soup out in the sun and take in the sun's energy, it actually adds to the problem because it accelerates the deterioration of our frog soup. It doesn't hinder it. Energy coming in from the sun does not help evolution fight thermodynamic law at all. Saying that energy from the sun will help evolution fight the laws of thermodynamics is like saying that energy coming in from the sun is going to eventually cause things to float into outer space in spite of the laws of gravity. Any way you cut it, the first life on Earth was a supernatural process. Now, I would suggest to you that supernatural process was the direct intervention by an intelligent being, God, who came to visit planet Earth in the form of a human being by the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus said that this Earth was going to burn up, melt away in the ultimate demonstration of the second law of thermodynamics, and he was going to produce a new heaven and a new Earth. But in order to get into that new heaven and new earth, you must be saved from your sins. Now, he provided a free way for you to be saved from your sins. Why don't you call upon him today to save you from your sins? Okay, take two. We're going to take Mr. Blender and Mr. Frog. Put Mr. Frog into Mr. Blender. Put Mr. Blender on. It's just a trick. This is Freddy Stunt Frog. Kids, don't try this at home. Okay, Freddy. Freddy gets to go home, just so you can see. No frog for hurt the production of this film. He's a very happy frog now.